Hi, everyone. It's Monday morning. I hope you're starting off the week great. We have a beautiful card by a woman named Karen Farquhar, which I have to say very carefully. I hope I pronounced it right. Um, and I love it. It's using the stamp set posted for you. So let's get started. So isn't this card lovely? Karen did a whole series of these cards um, and I may be uh, showing you them to you in the next few weeks. I just thought they were beautiful. I love Posted for You. I've used this a ton of times. But one of the reasons I like this card, it also uses um, um, this designer series paper called Peony Garden. Um, I thought it was really pretty and I like the idea of doing that. Now she made a whole series of cards like this so hopefully you'll get to see them. Um, you can also look them up. They're pinned on my Pinterest page. Um, and I love this color combination because it uses really pretty colors like petal pink, granite gray, basic gray. Um, so we are going to use that today to make this card. And it's a pretty easy card to do. The only thing is, I don't know if I have the embossing folder we need. So I may skip over that part unless it appears really quickly. Um, I have a tendency to get ready for you guys and then forget one or two things lately. I guess I'm getting too relaxed in my process. So I don't see the embossing folder and I'm going to skip over that. I will talk about it though. It's timeless. It's a textured um, one, it looks like fabric. I love it. I've used it a ton with you guys. You guys know how to do this, so I don't think I need to show you. Um, but let's get the stamping part done first. So I'm going to start out with a piece of Scrap Whisper White. I'm working with my Memento ink, just in case I want a color. I could also use Stazon or any black ink for that matter. And I'm going to create two stamps. Uh, for the card and then just punch them out and I think I'm going to do them on this section of the cardstock and leave the center for the circle that I want to do. I don't like the way I did that so I'm going to flip it over. I can see I missed a little bit. leave it on for a second longer that's much better and now I can use my postage rectangular postage stamp punch to punch it out and the nice thing is I can center it just not over the ink because we've all seen my little disasters and just get that nicely centered and punch it so now all that's left is this little circle and I can see I don't have enough room so I have another scrap piece of paper that I'll pull out that we can use. Um, oh actually I already did this. It's like I already made one but I'll tell you how I made it. I started with first of all stamping the image. Actually I'll just show you because that's silly not to show you. Let's see I got scrap paper right here. I thought Okay, this will work. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the, the circle. Um, and it's hard to punch out because truly what I should do is punch the hole first and then try to stamp it. But that is the issue with rubber stamps that are red rubber. You can't see where you're stamping. So I'm going to have to just eyeball it a little bit. And I found it easier to first stamp and then punch the little hole. And the trick with that is to just find where the edges are and just try to guesstimate that you're right in the middle. I didn't do a perfect job on that one, but I did a pretty good job. Um, but this bigger one will work. And the only reason why they're not listed, because see, I can see what I'm doing here, 
is because they're retired punches. So I used a one and a quarter and a three quarter inch punch um, for that little process. But those are both Stampin' Up! retired punches. They love to retire punches, which drives me crazy. So now I've got two of the components I need. I need this little um, piece. So I'm just taking a little strip that I would have cut off when I'm cutting cardstock. And instead of throwing it away, I just hang on to it. Um, and this one is just a note. It could be a happy birthday card. I think I'm going to turn it into a happy birthday card because I do have happy birthday right here for another card later this week. So let me grab my ink again. I'm getting so confident. I'm stamping upside down and I'm changing the sentiment. I may be sorry, but I do like to change up things. It's a little high. I'm going to stamp on the other side and see if I like it better. If I don't, we will use the other side because it is not bad. One of the things when you get a new stamp uh, is figuring out how it is laid out. And a lot of times the way you put that backing on it can throw you off because it doesn't line up perfectly. But this one is going up, so I am going to stick with this one. I could trim it a little bit if I wanted, but it really isn't that bad. Um, and I am going to use my tag punch to create a little flag. So I'm going to just sneak it through and try to pinch it where I want it. And then trim over here and do the same. This is an alternative to that new flag punch that we have. Um, the only thing is it's hard to line it up perfectly because you got to sort of guesstimate. And I can see I was a little short or a little too, too far away. So um, now I have everything I need to make this card except for this piece. So I'm going to get out a piece of that cardstock, which I have right here. And I'm going to punch out um, a piece of it. I love this paper. It's so pretty and so simple. And I could use the other side, which maybe I'll do with this card just because there's a lot of pink in it. So if I had my embossing folder, which I still don't see, I would have run this through. And there's nothing wrong with not embossing it. Um, it's just not what I intended. I like texture and I like scale in my stuff. But before I start, I'm going to use this beautiful gray shimmer ribbon. It is actually gray granite, which is a lighter color than the basic gray that I have in the back. But I like it still. And I'm going to go ahead and make my little bow. And because I want it off center, I'm not going to cut it right down the middle. I'm going to go ahead and cut that like that, but see how I want it off center. So I'm going to cut it a little bit on this side so that I can put it on there off center. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that on using my tape runner. Now, for some reason, my tape runner that I normally use, my stamp and seal has gone somewhere and it, I can't find it. Not that I'm that messy, but sometimes things just walk away. I probably put it away so good I can't remember where I put it. Do you ever do that? I do that all the time. It's kind of sad. Luckily my glue though is here. I get so good. I remember I put away a really beautiful piece of jewelry and I had everybody in the house looking for it and I had hidden it in a drawer in a bag because I was afraid someone would come in my house and steal my good jewelry. I hate that. My poor husband. He tries to buy me good jewelry and then I end up losing it somewhere in one of my drawers. So let's see if we like this better than the other one. I kind of like it. What do you think? This is going to go here, that there, and this here. So look at this, we made a sort of a different card using all the same components. I am gonna glue these a little closer together so that the happy birthday fits the way I want it. 
So I'm going to just lift my cards up. I love to do this when I know right where I want something and I have it all set. I just sort of glue it in place. Same thing here. Just a tiny bit of glue. And this is actually special delivery. It should really um, possibly go with a Christmas card, but I used it this way. Special delivery is happy birthday. So I'm going to turn this over and use four dimensionals on each corner because I want to put it over the ribbon, but not on my, um, not glue it down to my ribbon because then that sort of wiggles, but this will help keep the ribbon in place too. You know what? I just had an inspiration. I've taken out my petal pink blenders, and because I use memento, I can sort of get away with this. I am going to color in just this flower. And I'm using the dark first. You know how I like to do that. And then I'm going to use the light right on top of it. Just sort of blend it in. I just think that adds a nice little touch. Okay, so now all that's left is the happy birthday. And I am going to use dimensionals again, small ones. And they're going to go across. And I'm going to use three of them. It's a little excessive, but it'll make it lay nicely for me because that paper's somewhat curved. It's like I've lost my, um, oh, here it is, my pokey tool. Okay. Yeah. I like to use this sometimes to help me set this in place. Oh, I like it up there. See how I can use it to sort of see and my fat fingers aren't in the way. Um, and I like that. I still sort of miss the texture, but it's still very nice card and works very nicely with or without the texture. So thank you, Karen, for such a lovely inspiration. Um, I hope you get to do some stamping today. For me, a day without stamping is really a day without fun. <laughs> so have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.